Hello, you are tuning into Uneducated Guests with Josiah. I'm your host, Josiah. I'm a senior in high school that has to do a project for a college class, but I didn't feel like looking anything up. So, here I am. Today's topic is on uh, media. Like, uh... Well, basically, not really, like, uh, news media, basically journalism and uh, stuff like that. So, if you uh, know me personally, you know I'm a very skeptical person, and I don't necessarily trust the news all that much. I take everything I hear with a very grain of salt, because I think everything is extremely biased nowadays. Whereas we also have a lot better access to the internet and um, among things like that, we can get um, we can get a lot of a lot more information uh, than what we used to be able to uh, when we just uh, looked at the news sources and decided to trust them for everything they said. But since also with the uh, rise in uh, social media and stuff like that, like uh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. All these things uh, can also be used to very easily perpetuate uh, lies and false false news, fake news, <laughs> fake media, uh, and just uh, blatant lies uh, that people will believe. Uh, basically, uh, people, there's a generation of uh, baby boomers and stuff like that that are like, oh, I saw it on uh, Fox News or CNN. It has to be true because the news can't lie. And I still see that uh, to this day. Uh, my history teacher, uh, she's a very nice lady, um, but she was like, I saw it on the news, it must be true, to, um, I can't even remember what it was now, but it was just absolutely, uh, I thought it was sl- uh, ridiculous. But there's a lot of people nowadays that will still take Fox News or CNN or something like that and take to heart without uh, checking any other sides of the argument, and I think that's a major problem today with people uh, not or being too uh, too open, too trustworthy, uh, too uh, fa- false uh, false things. Like I get uh, not everything they report is uh, false, but it's uh, much like uh, statistics. Like if you see statistics somewhere, there is a very there is a very possible uh, possible chance that those statistics aren't necessarily fake, but they can be uh, skewed. To favor the subjects, uh, like say uh, four and five dentists uh, recommend uh, Marlboro cigarettes, as an old ad used to say, uh, smoking li- makes you live longer. These test results were completely skewed and false at the time. Now, research did finally come forward and tell you that they were uh, dangerous and that uh, they did not help you, they uh, caused cancer and stuff like that. But for a long time, people believed cigarettes were healthy for you. Because they had no uh, way of correcting that information, no way of looking it up that they were being lied to until a lot of people decided to, or, well, not decided to, started getting uh, cancer, uh, lung cancer, throat cancer, and stuff like that. And people are like, huh, maybe tobacco is not the best for you. And there was an entire generation that uh, got uh, marketed to by the media and news and that started smoking and. They're the generation that uh, would die a lot sooner. I mean, a lot of people have stopped smoking these recent generations, but there is still um, a decent number of smokers. And I did a little bit of research on this, uh, not um, media-wise, but I learned about um, how uh, cigarettes are still marketed towards people. A lot of places that uh, still smoke are in low-income areas uh, and targeted mainly to the black community. Because people, um, uh, it's just uh, the way um, the cigarette companies are targeted. They're located. Um, you can uh, you can do uh, look this up uh, on how uh, close, like um, the I'm trying to think of how to word it. The number of smokers will in a low income area would increase the closer they are to like a gas station or something like that. And I think it's the same with lottery tickets. Lottery is like a one in uh, so many chance of actually winning, but their lo- the low income areas will spend all their money on uh, gambling and try to make money. 
instead of saving that money up or spending it on you know bills because the way the places they are situated and the uh, things that are located I just feel like this tar this market demographic is uh, corrupt and it is uh, the companies that are corrupt in marketing it to low-income people that can barely afford rent let alone spend all their money on gambling and it's and it's an epidemic and it's it's an epidemic and I'm it's honestly appalling how so many uh, young people so many people that uh, not necessarily don't have a choice but some uh, that are um, are incapable of knowing better because the way they are raised or the low in the area they're in simply did not forbay uh, what they were doing is uh, wrong actions now a lot in my generation I see uh, cigarette is more of cigarettes are more uh, and tobacco are more of a taboo taboo um, area a taboo subject in a taboo subject in a lot of places uh, as if you um, like a lot of uh, students uh, at school at my school and schools around me uh, forbay uh, they uh, they disapprove of cigarette smoking a lot yet they will smoke um, illicit drugs and do illicit drugs like that's fine and it's a community thing and I don't think it's right I mean I think all of that stuff is not okay but a lot of people are doing it because the where they grow up and how they are raised and how they are taught by their parents or maybe that's uh, their friends that are like yeah it's completely fine or maybe it's just their own free will because a lot of people just decide oh yeah that's fun I like doing that and so they do it but a lot of people will forbear smoking except in uh, necessarily very low income areas around from where I am at it's not uncommon to see uh, lower income uh, homeless um, people that live in uh, trailer parks I'm not uh, trying to uh, forbear on them I'm just saying that I know of three trailer parks that are located within uh, one of them is located within a mile uh, within a mile of that trailer park there is a, to a tobacco shop a smoking den and a gas station all places that they can buy cigarettes and it's uh, despicable on how many like are located just within that single area like it's just so wild just to think about how the tobacco industry is doing that and not even just the tobacco industry itself the um, procurers the sellers of tobacco like cigarettes and stuff like uh, the smokers den uh, where you can also buy a uh, lot of other things but that place is not owned by big tobacco it's owned by normal individuals who would sell big tobacco's product to the low income area because they know it's a quick buck and it's it's sickening and uh, other like ru if you think of um, a rural place they won't be smoking cigarettes they would be uh, doing dip or something like that because the culture they have grown up in and the culture of their people is just sickening on how they grow up they would uh, do dip and stuff like that and you think of a uh, rule you think of trucks you think of corn you think of dip and a uh, cousin <laughs> lovers oh, that sounds so bad but it's the stereotype that we have built into the way we think like when you think of inner city you don't think of some poor, uh, innocent white girl that's just uh, down on luck with uh, that's trying to do well in school. You think of young African males that are thugs, and it's the way the media portrays people. The media has a lot of buzzwords like um, thugs or, um, uh, let's say, uh, immigrants in America. This is just uh, the buzzwords in America, by uh, mind you, because I don't watch other news articles. I don't understand. I mean, I don't mean I don't understand, but like, if you uh, th look at this news, all news places have these code words. When you uh, when uh, they think they say thugs, uh, they instinctively mean, uh, and they do mean this. Uh, they mean uh, young African males, uh, ages eighteen to twenty-five, that are just uh, bad people, and that's what they mean by it. And immigrants, they mean uh, Hispanics, like. 
no one's like illegal uh, immigrants. They f- mean Hispanics. They don't mean people that are illegally coming from Canada. And we all know this for a fact. They mean the Hispanic community that is tr- uh, migrating here either legally or illegally. They don't mean uh, like Europe- white Europeans that are coming uh, from on ships or something like that. They don't. And it's sickening how they will blatantly use these and just assume that we don't understand what they're talking about because a lot of um, people that you would use them are just baiting um, and it's terrible like every news like uh, Fox News and CNN they are both I wouldn't say they're untrustworthy but they both skew a lot of the truth and they're both very biased for one side of the coin and I feel like that is the opposite of what uh, what it should be. Journalism started out as a way to get information to people, and now it's just who can we destroy today? Who can we uh, put on a pedestal? Who can we make win the American people's hearts? And who can we put down because of their race or because of their... Uh, who they love or something like that and it's sickening it's absolutely despicable the way uh, the they do it I've been in a marketing class uh, for two years now and I understand how media roughly works and it's sickening on the things they just get away with um, and I don't understand how people are doing this So many lies can be spread through uh, news sources, through fake articles on the internet. And the the news people themselves aren't to blame, uh, per se. I mean, they do, they have the large part of it, but the viewers also not checking facts, just trusting blindly. That's also a major problem I see in this community nowadays. People will take something they read on uh, Facebook um, or something like that to heart and they will believe it. And that's how a lot of false rumors, a lot of lies get spread and they can ruin people's lives or just start so many problems. Like, uh, let's, for example, Donald Trump uses Twitter a lot, right? Well, he is like a loaded gun. He will just go off any moment. Uh, talking about just a numerous amount of things on Twitter and people will just lampoon them. Well, I mean, they should, but not necessarily for the things like it's all talk, but he calls a lot of them uh, fake news. But then he says uh, the things that they said are good about him are uh, true, which that's not really how that works. There's always two sides of the argument and you should always do your research on these things. And it's sickening to see that people will uh, believe certain lies they see on Facebook or Twitter. Like, uh, they are lampooning Trump for the, um, well, they were, I'm not sure. I haven't been up on recent news lately. But they used to, or they were lampooning him during about the shutdown for the, um, uh, the shutdown, the government shutdown over the wall. But I did uh, some, well, I've known about that topic. Or uh, people, uh, like, they were lampooning him because he shut down the government just because he's uh, throwing, quote-unquote, throwing a tantrum over a wall. But uh, early, uh, the other, before this uh, tax turn, he let the uh, the House and Congress spend, deficit spend, which is spending money we don't have. And all he asked for was $6 million uh, for the next budget to build the wall. And uh, they they uh, deficit spend, so they spent uh, our government money that we did not have on stuff, and then they were going to um, basically go back on their word and say they were not going to give him money for the wall. And I'm not necessarily saying I want the wall. I'm just saying I understand why he shut it down, why he uh, shut down the government because they went back on their word. Uh, he is a businessman. He is going to get what he wants in the end, and. If they just uh, did, if they just followed through with their word, uh, we wouldn't be in this situation. Now, I'm not necessarily a Trump supporter. I don't necessarily also have a problem with what he is doing. I am. 
I consider myself uh, middle uh, libertarian as my uh, parents, well, my mother anyway. Uh, my dad is very Republican, but I don't uh, share, I don't, uh, I'm not with his political views uh, very often or around them anyway. But I am very um, against illegal immigration. I don't have a problem if they uh, legally come to this country, but the way the media portrays them, I do have a problem with that. They like uh, they will. Put, I also have a problem with um, welfare and stuff like that because people abuse this. I don't necessarily have a problem with um, like people getting government help, right? I have a problem with the people who abuse it, who steal from our government, who do all that stuff, and it is crippling our economy by them stealing money and spending money that they don't need that they um the we need because we the people are paying our taxes to help people and the and um it's just it's just despicable but the media portrays all people that use welfare as um basically when you think of someone who's abusing welfare the media portrays them as an uh african ma or african uh, in the low income areas that basically don't need the money that but a lot of people can't work or they have a disability or something like that and or they uh, need it for their uh, children but a, a lot of people do abuse it and I'm saying that is wrong but a lot of people do actually need government help and it's it's really despicable seeing that people would lie and take that from the people who actually need it like uh, homeless people uh, get like link cards right some of them are mentally a lot of uh, homeless people would be mentally ill and can't work and it's sad seeing them on the streets but that's how it is then there's other people that are panhandling um, like uh, in my city there was a man panhandling by um, uh, our uh, one of our Walmarts and he would always uh, wear a military uh, military fatigues, like old military uh, jacket and stuff like that. And he would have a sign that says, "I need uh, money for the um, for the bus." And the police ended up chasing him one time, and he had uh, they chased him to his car, which was a Lexus, and it was filled to basically the brim with groceries people had bought for this man, thinking he was homeless and it's sickening people will do that stuff and the media portrays all of them as either terrible people or good people depending on which side of the coin you're looking for but it's i don't think it's either one i think there is there is some bad apples but there are a lot of people that actually do need government help and it's just it's so it's such an it's hard to think like uh, Fox News and uh, we live in white America basically where a white male's uh, college future is more important than a woman that had just been raped and it's sickening to see that on the news like uh, the Brock Turner case where he was only sentenced to I think it was a few months in a, in a jail or something like that I'll look that up uh, in a bit but it's sickening to see that people can get away after they do something so despicable where is our government's justice and why is the news covering it up by calling them by their name and not calling them uh like if a black male did the same thing he would be a rapist he would be a thug he would be a criminal and our news and media is so one-sided it is throwing them under the bus it is destroying it and it's keeping it very uh un -PC. it's very it's very biased on who they cover and what they cover. You will never see a black male having success. You will see the ones that are criminals, the ones that are uh, doing things. And it's perpetuating a stereotype of uh, black males being disruptive. And it's sickening to see in the media how they will destroy people's images because of their skin color, because of where they came up from. And... You will, it's, it's so hard to see. And 
basically you will never see someone in the media that is uh that is African for being good unless they're good at sports, good at rapping. And even then, the media will find every reason they can to lampoon, to heart, to destroy their careers, to put them down. Like the uh, Bill Cosby case, he was a rapist, and people are just now getting on this. Uh, same with R. Kelly, but I uh, people are like, oh, Bill Cosby uh, didn't really do that because um, because uh, they didn't come out sooner. Bill Cosby was a media manipulator. He was so big at the time that these accusations would have came out when they first happened that nothing would have happened to him. He would have said some joke on TV and the entire world would have forgot about it because he is so big uh, that the that he could never possibly do this. And it's sickening to see the people lampoon these women for the hashtag Me Too movement because it is an epidemic. While there are some false allegations, those are so mi- minute. There is such a minority of the false ones. And we are lampooning women and making them not want to come forward because the way the media perpetuates uh, that uh, women are liars, that white men are innocent, and people will lampoon everyone because of their skin color, because of their uh, gender, because of their ethnicity, because of anything. The media holds no bounds, but it will destroy people. But you will only see uh, one side get destroyed on one news media and the other side get destroyed on the other because they're both very biased and both have diff- like very opposite political agendas, so they will both twist the facts. And they will both lampoon people cnn uh is for the democrats and fox news is for the republicans i'm pretty sure but they're both very one-sided and you can never fully trust either of them so you should do your own research and figure out ways to uh ways to check your facts check their facts and it's so it's just painful to watch how journalism has changed in so much in I'm glad it has, though, in a way, because we have better ways of uh, checking ourselves, uh, better ways of searching for the truth on the Internet and different uh, sources, rather than just hearing it straight from the horse's mouth of lies. And if you believe all the things you are told, you will be stuck in ignorance because you will not be learning any better. And it's hard to see that uh, in people that judge someone by what they've heard on the news or lampoon them without knowing all of the facts. And I just hope we can become into a society where the just happens, the the bad people get put away and the good uh, aren't destroyed as we've seen in the media. But I don't think our society will ever advance to a state that we can uh, fully trust uh, people in this sense because everyone is out to get you in, the, in these days and it's hard to see uh, the news destroy um, the minorities or other news stations place everyone as white devils when it's just it's a minority of all these groups that are bad and a majority that are just neutral or good and It's hard to see uh, so much go wrong in our society just because the way the news portrays our people or the way the news portrays uh, everyone that isn't the same as them or is uh, too different or is just speaking outside the box. I wouldn't be surprised if I got lampooned for something uh, on this podcast. I'm uh, I'm trying to be very unbiased. I'm trying. I understand it's hard because uh, a lot of people can't be unbiased because of how they were raised and what they were taught. And it's hard to see uh, people just be friends and uh, watch people trust each other. And it's it's uh, I saw this story um, uh, on. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but it was still endearing and sweet anyway. (laughs) But it was uh, 
it was a post from this soldier uh, who was in Afghanistan, and he said he was uh, Hispanic, and he was stationed on a watchtower with uh, this very uh, racist white uh, male, uh, who was uh, very um, he was brought up very um, I'm not sure the word to use that would he was he was a hick he was a uh, very he was brought up very redneck very uh very just like that but anyway uh he was uh very racist he uh basically uh was extremely uh, judgmental towards other races but the uh his uh one day on watchtower he said uh he was basically talking to the hispanic male that was writing the story and saying that he would give his life for him because he was his brother in arms and he uh, trusted him with his life and he said I would bleed for you and I think that's very endearing on how if you actually get to know someone if you actually stop your prejudices or racism you can make friends and they would be more than willing because it doesn't matter on your skin we are all united as a human as a human race and we should look at the bigger picture and we should uh, protect each other from the ones that would be here to send us to our demise to destroy us and people don't do that the media perpetuates the lie and puts us all at each other's throats and it's sickening to see so many people uh, hurt each other because the way the news is spinning its web of lies and we aren't focusing on the real uh, enemies here and we aren't focusing on who's really destroying us who's really keeping us in our chains and we need to we need to rise we need to fight back against all these racial borders all these destructive boundaries that uh, our human race and media has set for ourselves um, I can't uh, talk about uh, something else, but uh, I think that's all the time I have for today. So uh, uh, I'll see you guys in a few seconds. Elevated music, go. Okay, I am back after doing some research, guys. And the episode's name is officially Media, News, and Journalism because I decided to cover a few extra topics during research. So uh, I searched up uh, about uh, certain, the leaning the way the news channels, like the main ones, are biased. Fox News is right-winged, as most people know. Fox News editorial, however, is far right-winged. So they're uh, further on the scale than just uh, the normal Fox News channel. CNN Web News is left-winged. CNN Editorial is far left-winged. So it seems both editorials are very, um, very far to both scales. Uh, BBC News, which is British Broadcasting Channel, is central and is not bi- and a biased channel because, well, at least for American news, it's not because they don't have a dog in a fight. They don't care about our news they don't care about what's going on in America I mean they do care but they are not going to be leaning to one side or the other so that's a very um, that's a very good place to get your news from Uh, numerous studies have shown that media contributes marginalizing particular ethnic and cultural groups depicting them primarily as problems for and threats to be the dominant propaganda campaign always comes with the question why We discuss the motivations behind fake news, sometimes it's simply a desire for monetary gain via advertising. In other cases, the goals can vary from the criminal to the political regardless of the motive. The success of any propaganda campaign will ultimately be based on how much it affects the real world. As the Eagle Mountain and Pole Creek wildfires raged across Utah Valley in September, BYU Y Digital Lab Managing Director Adam Durfee saw another destructive force raging across local news and social media, misinformation. A very popular, trustworthy Utah news outlet published a story about the fires that was blatantly inaccurate, Durfee said, and then a second story misrepresented the amount of fire containment, which gave people a very scary amount of security they shouldn't have had. 
Uh, that's a direct quote uh, from the article. Uh, Durfee cited less informed sources as the original point for most of the misinformation. To help combat the problem, he was asked by a communications team based out of a temporary fire headquarters in Salem, Utah, to help create a centralized data hub, according to the Daily Universe. Working, working with public information officers and BYU students Spencer Chris, Christensen and Casey Miller, Durfee established the Utah County Fire Relief website, a webpage where PIOs and public safety departments could directly post fire updates and press releases. Quote, somebody could read accurate information from the proper sources vetted by a crisis communications director in one spot, Durfee said. Within 24 hours, the site had gained about 25,000 views, Durfee said. However, after establishing a popular, trusted source of information, Durfee and his team were in a unique ethical position. Anyone could have posted misinformation to the site, feeding back into the cycle they were trying to fight. And another uh, another uh, thing of this is Orson Welles proved that America's Americans could be convinced of anything. Even a story as preposterous as armed Martians invading New Jersey. His brilliantly spun 1938 radio broadcast of the War of the Worlds created such havoc it even surprised Welles. The numbers actually duped by his Martian tale have since been disputed by a counter-narrative suggesting that American newspapers hyped the hysteria with fake news reports of panic in an effort to prove that radio, increasingly competitive with print, was an untrustworthy news medium. Quote, In fact, we weren't as innocent as we meant to be when we did, that Mar did the Martian broadcast, Wells said in a 1955 BBC interview. We were fed up with the way in which everything that came over this new magic box, the radio, was being swallowed. So in a way, our broadcast was an assault on the credibility of that machine. We wanted people to understand that they shouldn't take any opinion pre-digested and they shouldn't swallow everything that came through the tap, whether it was radio or not. Governments are starting to recognize that fake news is something that must be actively fought. Various uh, government agencies are now setting up services to debunk stories that they consider to be false. They are also considering imposing regulations and punishing sites that do publish misinformation. In 2015, a CNN segment over a word term... Oh, this is... So this is going along with not necessarily fake news. So the first part was uh, fake news in the media and how it's spread. Now I'm getting into uh, the racial tensions, the, um, the code words that I got into uh, during my earlier podcast and going into those, uh, not necessarily more detail, but I'm going to them quite a bit further than I did originally. I researched them and have a lot more facts. In 2015, a CNN segment over a word turned into an awkward, dramatic confrontation when host Aaron Burnett asked why the word thug isn't an acceptable way to describe predominantly black protesters and rioters in Baltimore. City Councilman Carl Stokes responded, Come on, so calling them thugs, just call them uh, N-word is, uh, to censor it, he was basically saying, like, I'm not saying he was right for what he, the way he put it, but he's right. He's saying, uh, why call them thugs when every, when you really mean that racist term? And it's just, uh, it's very eye-opening seeing uh, how he just worded that so bluntly, so blatantly, because Carl Stokes uh, saw through uh, the news media through uh, them uh, using the coded words and said to say what they really mean. It's uh, racist, racist denotations, and uh, Carl Stokes wasn't dealing with it, and I think that's uh, really admirable. Coded language describes phrases that are targeted so often at a specific group of people or idea that eventually the circumstances or of, of a phrase's use are blended into the phrase's meaning. So since thug has been used so often to describe black men in particular, even when they're doing nothing wrong, it now carries a racist connotation. Ian Haney Lopez, a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, is author of Dog Whistle Politics, How Coded Racial Appeals Have Reinvented Racism and Wrecked the Middle Class. He explained, Current racial code operates by appealing to deep-seated stereotypes of groups that are perceived as threatening, but they differ from naked racial terms in that 
they don't emphasize biology, so it's not references to brown skin or black skin. Um, generally, coded language is used against a group or idea that threatens traditional power structures, which in America are predominantly white, male, heterosexual, cisgender, that is not transgender, and Christian. These terms are commonly used against people of color, ethnic minorities, women, LGBTQ people, and religious groups, right now particularly Muslims. The 20th century witnessed a strong push to get beyond white supremacy, to get beyond a social commitment to ideas that elevate whites as human and decent and worthy and non-whites as less than human and dangerous and unworthy of concern, Haney Lopez said. That push has been most successful at a formal level, but when you see in response sort of as evolution is the search for proxy language that allows you to express the same fears in ways that aren't formally offensive. And I think that is absolutely abominable as I was talking about earlier before I did uh, a lot of this research and got into depth of it, is that racism is still very much alive in media. It's still very much alive. They are hiding it. They ha uh, Racism has evolved with our times, it has uh, been planted in the seeds of our news media, in the seeds of our uh, young children's minds. And that is why a lot of our children are growing up uh, either uh, not with the knowledge of how to better themselves or with the knowledge to hate their uh, others and their neighbors because of their colors or where they came from. Because Racism is planted in the seeds of everyone's mind. Uh, like, uh, I heard the term, uh, this, jeez, ah, I can't think of what it. So there's a phrase um, that people of color generally really dislike because they know after something, it's usually going to be very racist. But uh, when a white uh, person um, comes up to someone and says uh, something and says, now, I don't mean to be racist. They're usually followed up by something extremely uh, disconcerting or extremely concerning, extremely uh, biased and racist. And that's a noticeable thing that people have seen. But uh, now I'm going to get into uh, journalism itself. Uh, like the printing press, the telegraph, television, and all other forms of media that came before it, the internet has not only changed the methods and purpose of journalism, but also people's perceptions of news, uh, news media. Professors Bard Bardol and Deus note that the shifting balance of power between journalism and its audience, and the rise of a more self-conscious and better educated audience, both as producers and consumers of content, has indelibly altered the landscape of journalism. The two largest changes in modern journalism strike at the heart of traditional notions surrounding journalists and news companies. Firstly, the rise of the blogger and user-based journalism has become immensely popular among both new and old media companies, a change that has drastically altered the definition of a journalist among or set, ha, journalists. Secondly, the linked nature of the internet has given rise to um, of the blogger and user-based journalism, based journalism, and become immensely popular among both new, new and old media companies. A change that has drastically altered the definition of a journalist among both new uh, uh, has become immensely popular among both new and old media companies. A change that has drastically altered the definition of a journalist. Secondly, the linked nature of the internet has given rise to constant ad aggregate aggregators, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to say agitators, like Google News or the Huffington Post that no longer rely on individual journalists to provide news, but instead depend on their ability to gather and collect information to a single location where users can access it. Together, they are altering society's traditional ideas regarding journalists and news. Between 1970 and 2016, the year the American Society of News Editors quit counting, 500 or so daily, dailies went out of business. The rest cut news coverage, cut news coverage, or shrank the paper size, or stopped 
producing a print edition or did all of that. And it still wasn't enough. The newspaper mortality rate is old news, and nostalgia for dead papers is itself pitiful at this point. Even though I still say there's a principle involved, I wouldn't weep about a shoe factory or a branch line railroad shutting down. Haywood Brown, the founder of the American... The American Newspaper Guild said when the New York would went out when the when the New York world went out of business in 1931. But newspapers are different, and the bleeding hasn't stopped between January 2017 and April 2018. A third of the nation's largest newspapers, including the Denver Post and the San Jose Mercury News, reported layoffs. In a newer trend, so did about a quarter of digital native news sites. BuzzFeed News laid off 100 people in 2017. Speculation is that BuzzFeed is trying to dump it. The Huffington Post paid most of its writers nothing for years, upping that recently to just above nothing. And yet, despite taking in tens of millions of dollars in advertising revenue in 2018, it failed to turn a profit. Even veterans of August and still thriving newspapers are worried, especially about the fake news that's risen from the ashes of the dead news. We are, for the first time in modern history, facing the prospect of how societies would exist without reliable news. Alan Russ Bridger, for 20 years the editor-in-chief of The Guardian, writes, In Breaking News, The Remaking of Journalism, and Why It Matters Now. There are not, many, not that many places left that do quality news well or even aim to do it at all. And uh, that's all I have for today. Um, I hope you tune in next time. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I'm sorry about the sound. If it's uh, bad or a little messed up, I'm still not. Uh, em- I'm not implorable. I'm not uh, enjoying the use of this computer setup. But uh, the websites I got these from, they will also be down in the description. If you're uh, listening to this on YouTube, allsides.com media dash bias slash media bias dash ratings. Uh, I got. I use that for the. What, uh, how far leaning the news channels were. Journals.sagepub.com, trendmicro.com, uh, vox.com, uh, universe.byu.edu, cs.stanford.edu, cjr.org, newyorker.com. And I used uh, those mainly for just articles they had uh, and a little bit of the research and quotes. Oh, 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 oh,